Hello there, one and all, and thank you very much for tuning in to what I hope is episode 446 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, live on YouTube, as always. But I'm kind of sounding a little bit downbeat about it because um, <clears throat> this isn't going to make any sense if you're not a regular viewer and if you don't watch live. But because plenty of you do and plenty of you are very, very faithfully helpful, loyal, regular viewers, I need to say that yesterday um, I tried to do uh, several live streams. I would like to get through several today, but the gremlins were just not um, a, a playing ball. Um, and if I can just explain, normally when I do these live streams, I am actually able to see on a monitor that is kind of there, which is why I do a lot of this head movement stuff because that's my camera and I can see on a monitor that the feed is going through and I've got the live chat so that I can interact with you. For some reason that live feed uh, all of yesterday was just a, a, a black screen and that's all it is right now as well. It is just a black screen. Um, I tried lots and lots of different things, um, disabling things, disabling antivirus software, using different browsers, even actually in the end using a different computer, which is the first thing I should have done because I used Madame Persilaise's computer and the same problem was occurring on her computer. And I thought, okay, well, clearly this means that it isn't my PC. Um, the problem hasn't been solved yet. Uh, and I have been in um, YouTube who actually got in touch to say that, yes, th they wrote back and they said, yes, there is, they're, they're aware there's an issue but they're not really quite sure what to do about it at the moment. So um, so this is a very, very long-winded way of saying I've got um, the YouTube feed um, just on, on a tablet over here, which kind of shows me roughly what's going on. Um, but I'm going to be relying on you to tell me what's happening. And people are saying your audio is breaking up. It's glitching, breaking up and lagging. Mm, okay. That is not great, is it? So that shows that we still haven't resolved the problem. What if we do this? I've just changed one particular setting. So you tell me if uh, David's saying as if it's buffering, breaking up a bit. Mr. Persile says, Helen, you're breaking up. One thing that I haven't got okay is audio because I can't have audio, otherwise that would be... Um, not perfect, but workable, says Gavin. Perfect now, says Musk in heaven. <sighs> okay, well, let's carry on, because otherwise we're going to have a backlog of videos. For this one, for episode 400, for episode 440, I'd like to show you this. Now, this was a little bit of a surprise, because it is new from um, Hermes, um, but it's a release that is going to be, I believe, exclusive to France. Um, Oh, there you go. Jeff says, initially, I thought this was a fake because I found absolutely nothing about it. And also because it looked like a homemade effort of a very un hermes ish label sticker that's been stuck on a reused bottle. I mean, I know. <laughs> the thing is, though, Hermes, in all of their aesthetic, if you go past their boutiques, they've always had a sense of humor, or at least for as long as I've been aware of the brand, they've, they've displayed a sense of humor when it comes to their window displays. And I think you get a little bit of the sense of humor on that label there, but it must be the most cartoon-like, the most sort of overtly illustrated label. They've gone for a perfume bottle ever. And so, um, what is this? Um, as I say, it is a France exclusive that is meant to tie in with the um, Sot Hermes Equestrian event. Can you see that? Oh, there you go. So the back of the sticker actually specifies that this is for the Sot Hermes 2024 event. Whether that means that this is a limited edition, I don't know, because I don't have any press material about it. I've just got the tiny little leaflet that you get in most Hermes perfumes. Um, Tina says, I thought it was another children's scent. See, because I'm completely thrown by all of this, I didn't even say who the first comment went to today. Let's let's just do a little bit of scrolling up. First comment went to Mache, who says, we have persevered. Hello. Hello to all of you, by the way. Um, this is this is extremely off-putting, kind of just completely talking into a void, not knowing what is happening. I've just got kind of a little bar telling me that the sound is coming through. We cross our fingers and hope for the best. 
But the reason I wanted to share this with you is because it's really, really interesting. It's kind of, it's composed by Christine Nagel, of course. She is current in-house perfumer at Hermes. Um, we've got pre-sprayed blotters as well. We had pre-sprayed blotters yesterday as well. Um, paddock. It's called Paddock, in case I hadn't mentioned that. Um, what's Constantine saying? They used to do such things in the past as well. Even Jean-Claude Elena used to do that. Uh, George V or Georges V was a variation of Grand de Réglisse. Voyage, not to be confused with Voyage d'Hermès, similar to Calèche. <gasps> Constantine, could you get in touch with me somehow after this? Because I think you have solved a mystery. This is a bit of a sidetrack. But do you know their scent then that was called Voyage, that was meant to be exclusive to the Côte d'Azur, which is not Voyage d'Hermès, because I have a bottle of it and I have never been able to find out what on earth it is supposed to be. Constantin, if you know anything, please, please, please send an email to persolaise at gmail.com. But we need to move on. So, Paddock. Paddock shows Christine Nagel at her funkiest her naughtiest, her downright dirtiest. Um, thank you, Constantine. It's really, really interesting. What is so off-putting about that stream there that I can see is that it's like a sort of good five seconds behind what I'm doing. <laughs> this is enough to kind of give you some kind of multiple personality disorder. I think I just need to ignore that and um, concentrate on the live chat. So, <clears throat> Paddock. Christine Nagel, Hermès, France exclusive. I um, I got this sample a few days ago, and I've I've been wearing it on and off, and really really enjoying wearing it. Um, but I've and partly the reason I've enjoyed wearing it is because I've been trying to figure it out. It is to me anyway a very very difficult scent um, to. To, to, to kind of get my head round. Um, the first burst is of materials that um, I would absolutely associate with heat, but I'm not entirely sure why. And I swear if I didn't know better, there's something in there that is that has got a kind of roasted nut feel, but more than roasted, actually almost burnt. There's something about it, um, there's something about it that feels like, you know, food that has been left in the oven for too long, and so it's gone nearly charred, blackened at the edges, sooty. Is it nut? Because nuts have a very, very distinctive smell if you let them catch, you know, if you're roasting nuts, if you're roasting pine nuts, they can start smelling really, really horrible. But here it's compelling and it's also the smell of bodies, you know, hot bodies, but it's not cumin bio sweat territory. I wonder if it's also tying in with the heat and the stickiness and the resinousness of labdanum in the base. It, it's really strange. It, it's it's easily the strangest Hermes I've tried for years and years and years. S. Umar says, do you wish this was released instead of Oud Alzan? But yes, I think so. Um, you know, why this is a France exclusive, I have no idea. Maybe somebody out there will say, ah, but this is actually a throwback to, to another Hermes. If there is one Hermes that it's reminded me of, then it's the very first one. It's Odermes by Rudnitska himself. Dimitri says, please let us know if the carrot used is similar to how Rudnitska used it in vintage Diorella. I mean, there is something kind of rooty, carroty about it, but not overtly so, not in that kind of iris way. It's really, really fascinating. So it's kind of leathery, but not all out leathery like Gallo or Cuir d'Ange or the other the other Hermes leathers. Definitely, definitely the feeling of hay, but maybe hay that's gone a bit wet and has been sitting in the sun for ages. Um, I'm not horse-minded at all, equestrian-minded at all. I haven't ever even really been that close to horses in my life. But 
I would imagine that this is kind of giving off the smell of a horse after it has sweated. It has a horse manure note, says Pradeep. I know it's meant to. And there is something maybe fecal about it, but again, not in a kind of overt way, not in a sort of immediate civet, yes, this is a fecal note way. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, lo and behold, it's quite abstract. It's that thing that on this channel we very often say that we want. Gavin says, it doesn't sound very Hermes. No, it, it and it isn't very Hermes, and I think that's one reason why I like it. Um, Christine Nagel told me about it a few weeks ago in London when she was over for the launch of Oud Alzan, and then she gave me the interview that you can read on my Substack, where we also talked about the new H24. And as she was talking, she said, there's something new that is exclusive to France, and I think you need to smell it because I think you will like it as it's quite daring. And I should never have doubted her that she would arrange for this to be sent to me, but because, you know, brands say all sorts of things, they will say, yes, you know, we will send you this, and you, you kind of nod very politely and say, yes, I'd be very interested in trying it. But as I said, I shouldn't have doubted her, because a few days ago, this arrived, and she was right. It it, it really, really took me by surprise. Um, Rebecca says, I love horsey sweat and manure smell. It's like catnip to me. How does it compare to Roque by Roberto Greco, says Thomas? Funnily enough, I wore that again the other day. No, Roque is, is much more elegant in its leather, isn't it? And it's much quieter, and it's somehow much purer with its leather note. This, this feels like a fuzz of heat, a haze of heat. Let me tell you um, what the, um, <clears throat> the the little booklet says. So it, it it talks about the event, but then it says it was while visiting the Sot Hermes stables that Hermes in-house perfumer Christine Nagel felt the desire to capture the event's unique olfactory atmosphere. Paddock, eau de parfum, named after the arena in which riders and horses relax and prepare, recreates the blend of honeyed accents, very dirty honey, honeyed accents of hay with amber notes of carrot seeds. It is the scent that precedes and follows every rider. And that's all they tell you. And I kind of love the fact that that's all they tell you. Um, Tina says, makes me think of Rouard or Rouard Parfum d'Empire, which I haven't tried either. Now that's meant to be their oud, isn't it? I haven't tried it either. I've got, I've, I've ordered a sample. A sample should be on its way. Um, but, but I don't get anything oody here. Now, where's the pre-sprayed one? It it kind of stays mostly like this. But I suppose, if anything, the strangeness fades away, which is maybe no bad thing, because you don't want perfumes to be eternally weird. Um, Spaced Out says, is it an animalic honey similar to Leather Rude? It didn't make me think of leather root, and as you know, I'm a huge fan of leather root. I guess for me, leather root is has got more of that cypriol. It's more fiery, um, more more obviously oudy. This this doesn't make me think oud. Okay, um, it it's um really well done, really interesting, and really genuinely surprising. You can almost feel Christine Nagel having fun while she was composing this. And the other, and, and just smelling it now, actually, just kind of let me do the pre-sprayed one because as, as Eliane Puente reminded us the other day, you can play a little bit of an isolation trick. Um, it It's definitely got some kind of interesting floral note doing a bit of work there. If I didn't know any better, you know, something that is reminiscent of Lily of the Valley or a very, very gentle Jasmine, really, really interesting. Um, Noah says, one of my friends who smelled it said it reminded him straight up of horse um, urine. Kind of made me worried, but I'm an old horse girl, so I will probably like it. See, I'm, I'm not sure I'm aware of the smell of horse urine either. You can tell we are fascinated, definitely interested. Um, the trouble is, who's going to be able to check it out? I mean, would, would, would Hermes Boutique ship a sample uh, abroad? Is it going to be a limited edition? I don't know, but but it's definitely one of the most surprising things that um, Christine Nagel has done so far at Hermès. And I think we have got to the end of the first of today's broadcasts. I am planning to do uh, three more 
uh, videos, we're going to come back with a single perfume review and then another single perfume review and then a brand showcase while I'm looking at a blank screen. So thank you very much for bearing with me. If you enjoyed the video, please give this a thumbs up. If you would like to uh, support my work, you should be able to see a link to my coffee page in the video description below. Um, but I will be back in just a few minutes. Thank you for very... <laughs> thank you for watching. Bye now.